Dave here, how are you? Today is the 31st, end of January. Um, last day of the first month of 2021. Uh, and hopefully things are looking up for everyone around the world. It's looking pretty good in Australia as far as this COVID thing's concerned. Um, I'd like if some, one of my uh, guys down there could let me know if the stream is coming through well and also whether or not we've got good sound. Um, that'd be great. Vid audio good. Thank you, Peter. The other thing I was going to say is during the show, <laughs> I haven't been here much and the battery might die. I have a spare battery here for this uh, sound pack here. So if it dies, one of my uh, moderators, please, could you let me know? Okay, on the show today, it's a bit of a packed one. Maybe not too exciting, but it's in the progress or the, or the development of this box that I'm building. And I've sanded this one down to 800 on the inside. On the outside, you can still see it's got all the marks and everything, but on the inside, that is just beautiful. Hasn't been put together yet on purpose because we've got to, uh, we've got to make the top and we've got to make the base for it. So today we're going to make the top and that's this thing here. Everything good from Quebec, excellent. All right, so this week on the show, inlay hue and pine into the book matched Australian cedar. Now this piece here has been book matched, which means that I've ripped it out of one board, opened it up like that, and hence you can see that now I have a 12 inch wide board that's actually made from two six inch boards. So I glue those up and we're going to dress that down to width and length, put it on the CNC to do a inlay in it. And even though it's not going to be, you know, really extensive inlay, I thought it'd be good to use the CNC because I haven't used it for a while in the show. I could have done it on my trim router and you saw how I put those slots in the other week. And, you know, that's how it's going to work. Uh, router table, saw fence, saddle. Now, someone asked me how I built the saddle for my router table uh, because it uses the same fence, the rip fence on my table saw. So I'll go through that a little bit as well. Uh, the Brisbane show, Timber Tools and Artisans show is off. Sorry to say, I spoke to the organizers during the week just to find out what was happening because it was getting closer. And uh, they informed me that it, they just can't progress with it this year because they've got no idea what's going to happen. You can't get all those people into an area uh, and guarantee they're going to have the four square meter rule and one and a half meter distancing. They just wouldn't do it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame. Uh, look for it next year. We don't know what's happening with the, uh, with the Sydney show. Hopefully that will go ahead. But again, who's got a crystal ball? Uh, I caught up with my daughter's family during the week and that was great. Now they're doing a trip around Australia at the moment. Been out on the road for 10 months and they've gone up to Queensland, right up the top, up through over to Darwin, then down through the centre, through um, uh, South Australia, then Victoria, then over to Tasmania and they've come back from Tasmania into Victoria again. And there was a quick spot. Uh, they had to get the van service that they're towing around and they have a depot in Albury. And let me see if I can see a picture um, of, there you go. That's Eb and myself, we met up in Albury during the week. So that was a six hour drive down and a six hour drive back. And uh, there's another pic here. Uh, that's Ace, who is one of my grandsons. And he was, he's just a cuddle pot. <laughs> what can I say? Um, back over here again. So that was really good to catch up with the family. Uh, if if you're interested on following them, of course, it's called On The Warpath, W-A-U-G-H, which is their surname. I will put a link in the description box after the show. I haven't got one there. Oh, now also links in the description box. If you want to win this, this particular uh, <laughs> crystal ball, yeah. Um, if you want to actually win this particular backpack, it's a Festool backpack, I'm going to give it away. Now, this is to people in Australia only. How I got that was I bought a Festool tool two weeks ago and this was part of the promotion. They said you can have a t-shirt and this thing as well. And I said, look, I really, <laughs> I'm not interested. In I've already got a Festool backpack. I thought it might be nice to share the love and send this to someone in Australia. You don't have to do anything, just enter the competition. Uh, you don't have to go and log onto any sites or anything. Just click the entry 
You can do it every day if you wish till I think it's around Friday during the week. Um, snake in the grass. Yeah, I'm going to show you that halfway through the show. Uh, we had a very, very large snake here during the week. Yeah, it's Australia. I live in the bush and we have highly venomous snakes. Now, I thought it was a tiger, the guy who came to try and get it, but he, <laughs> the snake took off, get away, got away from the catcher. He thought it was an eastern brown. I'm, I don't know. I've got video and I'll show you. Make up your own mind. You can't see his head because he's so big. Um, it couldn't have been me because it wasn't a blue shirt. Of course not. <laughs> of course not. Um, also, viewers projects will be shown next week, uh, as well as a panel raising bit on this lid. Now, as I say, I, the, the show is going to be packed today. I will not have time to show viewers projects. I've got a couple of people sent stuff in. If you've got something to send in, send it in during the week and I'll do a fair bit next week. Because doing the raise, the raise panel cutter on this lid will be fascinating. We might even glue the box together at the same time. But, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. And the patrons, all that kind of stuff. Thank you very much for supporting us. And we'll hook in. We'll hook in. First thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to take it down to, what width have I got written here? 275 millimeters across. Now I'm going to use the jointer. I'm not going to use the table saw. This is pretty parallel. So I'll give it three passes on one, one edge and then three passes on the other edge. And then we'll bring it back here and then take it over to the capex and dock it down to length. And uh, this it's going to be fun. This is really, really nice. It's very, very figured timber. Can you see that? That is Australian cedar. And when I saw this particular piece, I thought, I got to get this and book match it. All right, I'm going to take it over here. Now, one of the other things is um, Kiwi007 made comment that I wasn't using my particular jointer correctly. Now, there it's got a European guard on it, which means you normally have the timber across and you feed the timber under that guard and out the other side. Now, the thing is, I don't like using my hands when I'm down close to the blades. I always use push blocks. I keep the guard open to the width, no more. I try and keep it forward as possible, like bring the fences forward so I'm not leaning over the machine. And I hold down over the outfeed and the cutter head at the same time. I always have pressure in that area. I hardly ever push down on the infeed table. It's always on the outfeed. It's just how I've always used a jointer. You use a jointer how you feel is the safest. Now that's the key element. It's got to be safe. Those things, if you slip, your hand goes onto that cutter head. It will happen so quick. You know, it, but that's that. That's how I do it. Um, when I'm doing the edge, when I'm going across this way, I will not be using any push blocks or anything because I am way, way, way away from from here down to the cutter head down there. Okay. So we'll switch cameras and we'll take it through a few passes. And I nearly hit the stop stream. What am I doing? Nope. What is going on? Oh, damn. I'm not going to be able to show you with that camera because I haven't started the sh this again. Oh, I am so sorry. Not to worry. I thought I had it all done. I really did. Oh, look, I'm going to have to just turn this and we'll see how it goes. I had a camera set up and I didn't start everything back again. So there's the joint over. You can see the camera over there. Uh, tuning in for the router fence setup. Excellent. Okay. Is that, I'm sorry about that. There's nothing I can do. I can't start it again because this show will not allow me to do that or this particular software. I could turn it off and start it up again. But you know what? It would, it would just stop the stream totally, but I'm not, so I'm not going to do it. Here we go. Let's get this happening. I'll get my remote, which is this one for the dust extractor. Turn her on. You're just going to have to watch from behind. I'm sorry. Ha. Oh dear. All right, we're going to run this over three times. Just check the depth I've got, one millimeter. I'll bring it forward. To there. Take this back in to about there. So you can see 
I really don't have much of the blade exposed. All right? Yes, I am human. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's my edge that I've got there. Turn that off. Get my tape measure. Yeah, what a bugger. What a bugger. What have I got to have here? Uh, I've got 278 there at the moment. You're allowed to come in late if you've been watching Cole. <laughs> How good is Cole? He's just such a nice guy and he's doing all of this to help everyone out. 278. Sounds like you didn't watch the recommendations Eastley's video on the journey. You're still used to the Americans. Now you adjusted the guy correctly. Okay, Kiwi, I did watch um, Eastley's video and if that's the way he wants to do it, fine. I am not going to put my hand that close over the guard. I don't care. If that guard's there, I'm not going to push the timber in and run my hand over the top and all that kind of stuff. I will use big push blocks to go over the top of the guard. I'm sorry. And they've got to be good push blocks, quality ones. Don't use just rubbish push blocks. Spiral cut it, definitely. Yeah, otherwise it would have been screaming. 279 at that end. All right, so let's have a look at which side I've just dressed. And it is that side. It's just beautiful. Let me have a look. The American style jointer has got basically a lamb chop style guard, which is what my other jointer has. All right, we're gonna run again and take off um, another three passes. You can see here, it's got a fair bit of uh, marking from the saw. Down here. And the grain, the grain is going up that way. So I'm going to start at this end and cut that direction, like so. Forcing, you may not see it, but I'm pushing onto the outfeed. This is just guiding. And then as I come to the cutter, I start to increase the load and I'm holding back here to make sure I'm staying square. You see that? I'll do it one more time. And we'll measure that. Two seventy five, two seventy five and a half. I'll give it one more pass, just the one. Close that off. All right, over to the capex and I will dock this you guys won't be able to see this part but that's okay I just got to dock it down to length a whole lot of rubbish in the way here I might be able to spin this around It's seen through all my cables. Oh well, it is what it is. 
I'm going to turn the lasers on so I can see exactly where it is. I've got just here, you can't see it, but I've got some rubbish there that I want to just clean off. And I don't want to lose too much of the board. So I'll do a scribe cut to start. And back full depth. And up. So that's in between all the cables. See, this is the part that I wanted to get rid of, which I did. And that looks beautiful. And now the length that's got to be is uh, 562. Spin it around. Five sixty two. Beautiful. I'll open that up and open the bottom one up. Close that. Just grab a bit more of that dust as it's coming through. All good. Cool. Uh, now this is going to be the hard part, but we'll see what we can do. About there. All right, take those off. Now that's, that's my board. That's the top. Your other joint, is that straight or helical segmented head? Are you still selling it? It's a segmented head and it is sold here. Um, it's getting picked up during the week. There we go. So that is going to be the lid. And isn't the gonna it's gonna just look beautiful. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a slot in there. Now Vicky was saying to me the other day, sometimes less is more. So I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. Um, I was talking about patterns on the top here. I was gonna go crazy. So let me see if I've got a picture there of how it's going to end up looking. That's what I'm going to do. I was going to have all sorts of little fancy things in the corners, but you know, I thought let's let's just stick with this. Now it's going to be done with um, with Huon pine instead of uh, camp laurel. I was thinking about doing it with camp laurel, but I decided against it. So this is my Huon pine here. And it's just a beautiful timber. And I scored it at a bargain price. $7.50 for a really, really nice, clean, clear, just the one little knot at the top there, um, piece of Australian endangered species, I guess that's what you could call it. <laughs> okay, <coughs> pardon me, where'd you get your Huon pine from? Here in the Huon Valley, guys, pull the logs floating down the river. Um, I got it from where I work. We've Sometimes what happens is people will have been working with timber all their lives and they've retired or they've died. And the estate wants to get rid of all of the timber that they've got stored. And so Carbotech snatched some up. I don't know if that was the exact situation. Uh, <laughs> stole it. But that, uh, it gets sold and comes down in a pallet four feet long. Look at this piece of Australian cedar that I got. This is another piece of Australian cedar, which is two inches by, say, six inches. And you can see it's four feet long. And that's how much it cost. I love it. You know, I couldn't leave it there. I had to buy it. I just had to. All right, I'm going to close this part of the thing off. And we're going to use the bandsaw to rip the hue and pine down the center because I'm going to create uh, quarter inch inlays. Now the thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I've got more meat 
So I've just given it a quick touch on the bandsaw already just to make sure that I'm centered on the blade. I want to give it more meat than I actually need because I need to plane it off and get it really nice to be able to slot it in. So I'm going to do a rip this way, then I'll turn it sideways and do two rips that direction to, to get what I'm after. Then we'll take this over to the CNC, create that path. As I said, I could have done it with the trim router, but it would have been so much nicer for you guys to be able to <laughs> see it over there. What a shame. What a shame. All right, not to worry. We'll do this first, we'll rip this, and I'm going to be using, I don't know if you can see them from here, Zoe's sign might be in the way. Uh, I'll bring that forward as far as I can to move the bag out of the way. And I hope the sound is still traveling well here. So if you have a look up there, I'll see if I can show you, I'll point to it. I, I told you I've, uh, the people from autoblastgates.com.au came here and they helped me set this up. Now this is an automatic blast gate up here. I think you can see it up the top. And the great thing about this is they don't foul. Now I've got ordinary blast gates around here that slide inside each other and the bloody things get sawdust stuck in there. And it's just a pain. Um, you know, they're jamming all the time. I've got to go like this. This thing is three individual pieces of very substantial ply with a specialized coating on it, like the Colonel's <laughs> herbs and spices. And one piece slides right the way out on a pin and comes back and there's nothing behind it. So it can do this if it wanted to. So it goes to there and then comes back and it's, that's the closing of the gate. Now also on it, and again, I wish I had the stuff to be able to show you, it has a linear, actu linear actuator like a ram. So as it gets pushed by that linear actuator, by the top, the linear actuator comes up as it's pushing and it hits a switch that turns my dust extractor on. How cool is that? So we're going to use that right now while I'm doing this. I'll make sure I've got my things here. I'm going to use this fellow again. Remember I showed you the Bow Industries thing last week or, or, or a while back, I should say. Release that so I can take it in. Get this, put that there. Again, I'd really love to have everything up nice and close. That's good. It's got a, it's a chunk of silicon. Come back just a little. That's better. And lock it. Beautiful. All right. So I will be feeding in with this. These push blocks are great. On the back, I can push that like that and that one also. And there, come over here a bit further. They are locked. Hold on. Now you lock them up, lock them up out of the way. I'm going to have them this way. Not right. I have a quote for four of them on our men's shed. They are fantastic. You watch how good it works. All right. Turn it around this way and feed it through, yep, pull that back. When I turn this on, it will turn everything on and that above me, just here, will open. There she is, she's open. I'm gonna check the dust extractor's working. Sure is. You can hear it down here, going great. I love it. The blade is tensioned on the bandsaw. Always respect a bandsaw. They won't ask twice. And I'm going to feed the timber in. Up, come around the other side and just pull it through now. There we go. Book matched. How cool is that? 
Turn that off. Now I'm going to take that off. How easy is that? The saw has stopped. The dust extraction is still running. Wait for it to stop. Listen. The gate's shut. It hasn't shut yet. There it is. Do you hear the gate shut and everything turns off? Right. 10 seconds, they say, for the dust extractor to clear the line. And it's off. They're so nice. I'm going to buy another one for down the end for the jointer. Because everything off this line is pretty easy to use. They do them in 6 inch and 4 inch. So they look after absolutely everything. Yeah, they are, they're brilliant. All right, now, let's have a look. I will also set the jointer up in a minute to act as a thickness planer. But first of all, let's go over there. We're halfway through. That's not bad. It does smell nice, but it's not like camphor laurel. So it's slightly different. Okay, so you can see the CNC machine. <laughs> Over there, way over there. Um, I'm going to take this over there and we'll, we'll run it. Oh, again, I'm so sorry that uh, I didn't set that last camera up correctly. So I'm putting it in and we've we'll, got it on the clamps. And this one also clamped. I'm not going anywhere near the... Um, I'm not going anywhere near the edge. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up its zero on X, Y, and Z. Doesn't take long. How we do that is we connect this to there. So now what I've got, if you can see me in here, is when I bring this over and the cutter actually touches this and the sides, it completes a circuit. So we'll do that first. All right, now we're going to bring this back and back that way and then across and then page down a bit. About there. Now, turning it that way and let's do the... Uh, auto Z everything making sure I've got the right size cutter in there and I'm going to put in 6.35 millimeters and in metric and we're going to do the corner. Standing here so if anything happens I can stop it. Touch perfectly. Up you come. It will in a second. There it is. And About there. Okay. It's going back down the table now. Done. And rotate it so it's going to go across for the X axis. I'm turning the flutes so they're in the right direction. And the other thing, from here, you might be really good to be able to see this. Uh, I know, of course, you can't, Matthew, because I haven't got the camera in there. That's why I've come back out here to explain what I've been doing. The other thing is, in that, um, the spindle has not got any power connected to it. It's run by a variable frequency drive. So that is totally disabled at the moment. I've got it actually turned off physically with a physical switch. Um, all right. Excellent. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to go back to it and we'll start her up. Well, I'll do the last of the x-axis now. It's coming, it's coming back across this way and going to touch. Give me a second. Done. Beautiful. It's going to pop up out of the way. That's all sorted. How lame is this? It's terrible. It would have been so nice with it. I had the camera right on it. Okay, so we can close that. Uh, we're in metric and I'm also going to load the G-code now. And it is called the 6.35 millimeter compression cutter. Open it up. And it's telling me exactly where everything is going to be. We're going to millimeters. And it's telling me it's 53 millimeters. So I'm going to come down. 
and it's 3.45. I've got no reason to doubt it. 28, 28, page up. Turn on the variable frequency drive. You can hear it. Uh, get some goggles, which is always smart. Uh, I know, I know, I know. It's just terrible. I'll be back in a second. We'll just cut this and you can have a look how it all looks when I've finished. Start the Dusty up. You can hear it sucking up through there. It's not going to do a lot because for demonstration work, I leave this off, this guy. Uh, that's so depressing. All right. It's in. I'm going to do my check. Touch the Z off. Job secured. No obstructions. Turn on the extractor. Turn on the VFD. The correct color is in. The code is in. It's already been homed. We are in metric, and as soon as I push cycle start, it'll happen. Now, I'm going to go back over there in front of that to just keep my eye open. Let's see how we go. Beautiful. If only you could see it. It's just magic. You'll see it in a second. More than halfway done. Finished. I'm going to send it back away from me. And bring it out. Okay, turn that off. Done. What a shame. What a shame. Anyway, there it is. How quick was that? It's just magic. Um, I'm up scan. It's all gone. Uh, thanks for helping my joint of thickness. My pleasure, Riley. Um, I'm still looking for that review on uh, Google. I haven't seen it yet, buddy. Um, I always do those strips of wood for inlays. Uh, then I measure the setup on my CNC, right measure to the wood to inlay. CNC will respectively ease, ease the final measurements. Yes, that could work very, very well. This is one of the first times I've done inlay with the CNC. So in time, I will get my head around all of that. In time. Now, the problem that I have now is that I have round corners. I don't want round corners. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get my corner chisel and I'm going to hold a square, a roofing square, which might seem a little bit rough as far as, you know, joinery is concerned, you know, joinery. <laughs> so I'm going to slide this in here and put my square. I'm going to drop that camera down a little bit so you can see what's going on. About there. Oh, what a shame. So I'm going to set the square up right in the corner. Because it's such a small area to chisel, I don't want to stuff it up. So I'm going to use the square as my guide. Done. Here's my corner chisel. This is a nice little Narex corner chisel. Sure do. And I'm going to put it right in the corner like so. Now that square is my guide to hold it. I think I'm there. Let's have a look. We'll dig all that stuff out. Very annoying. It does such a beautiful job. Uh, that is, or was, should I say, an Amana tool, spectra coded. Oh, lovely. Compression cutter, quarter inch. That is so nice. 
Now I'll show you. I'm, I'll do one more corner. You know, it's only the outsides, not the insides. I'll show you. I'll do one more corner. So you see, this corner now is square inside and outside. This one is round on the outside. I'll bring that up closer to the camera. So that's round on the outside. And the one that I've just chiseled is really nicely square. That's why using that guide is such a good idea. It's, it's just a roofing square. There's no fanciness to it. I'll, I'll do this end. And then we might have a look at the, the snake. Would that be nice? It is a lovely chisel. Now, it's back in the day when Carvatec used to stock them. I don't think they stock them anymore. But I think they've got the Sorbies and the, the Veritas corner chisel. And the Veritas one works on a magnet. Let me see if I can put this screwdriver down here to help me align that corner. Well, there you go. There's a tip for nothing. Lock that. And then this one. And now into the corner again with the chisel. It works so well. You know, I could have just gone in there and thought, yeah, I can do it. And stuff it right up. <laughs> and thought, how does everyone else get it really clean and crisp in the corners? Dig it out a bit more. Lovely. Okay, so I've got two done and I'll do this one here because I'm not going to be able to do all of the inlay in today. I'll get, I'll get two in and that should be enough for you to see what I'm doing. We'll get, I'll prepare the rest of it for next week. one. Beautiful. It's only a tiny, tiny slither. That's why I really do need the assistance of the corner chisel. Done. I'll stuff it. Let's do the last one. <laughs> why not? I'm only... It's only going to take two minutes. I'd rather get them all done than, than I'm not going to create myself a headache further down the track and go, oh, why isn't that working? And again, the Stanton bench is doing such a great thing. If you want one, remember I send them out anywhere in the country in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and if you're in the States, well, or England, just buy the plans. There's links down there for the plans if you want one. They're very easy to make. And I have a video on how to assemble them if you just buy one from me. And also you can see the video as well if, if, if you've just got the plans. There's links to it all. Links to where you get everything from if you want to. The legs, the works. All right, done. Okay, so Timbercon have got those. Excellent. You know, I've, I've often gone into a corner and thought, yeah, I can do this, I can do that. <laughs> and next thing you know, yep. <sighs> there we go. All the corners are nice and sharp. And this, sorry, this grain is just going to pop. What we're going to do next week, we're not going, but what we're going to do next week is use a, ra a panel raising cutter. And that will put a really sexy scallop on here and allow this to finish at six millimeters thick here to go into the edge of the box that I've created. And since it's set up slightly light, higher, the, ra cut it, the, the panel will, the panel raising bit will finish shy of the hue and pine. I'll sand the hue and pine down perfectly. It's gonna look really sexy. All right, 
Um, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. If you want one of these Festool backpacks, and see it hasn't been opened. I don't know. They put this over the um, embroidery all the time with, with packaging like that. Uh, it's it's going to be great. Um, over the cornices that I bought in Banggood, yep. Excellent. All right. Let's have a look at this. Now I'm going to run this under the thickness planer and take it down to be a little bit thinner and nice and dressed. And that's the width I'm going to use for here. And then I'm going to cut lengths off. That's how I'm going to do it. I think <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan, Stan. What a shame this rotten camera isn't working. I am so annoyed with myself. Not to worry. Not to worry, there's always next week. Spin this bad boy around again. And you'll be able to see me feed it into the thickness planer. I love this machine to bits. I just love it. There's various types, all basically the same style of machine. This is a Carbotech. You can get a wood, wood fast. Um, you can get a jet used to make them. I think Rikon make uh, look. They're just beautiful. But this one is mine. And so, of course, it's the best one in the world. I'll flip this over, and that's going to have the dust extraction point up there. I'll wind her up. Doesn't take long. See the table coming up? And it needs to be... 22, 18, 9, 8. Let's see how thick this is. I'll quickly put a tape measure on it. <laughs> you want the box. Okay, so that is 10 at the moment, or 11. I'm going to take it down. I've got to end up at 6.35. So I'm going to take it down to 9 millimeters in this pass. Take it back up one. 9 mil and I'll send the pair of them through. Make sure that that port is open, and it is. We'll turn on the Dusty, and I'll put the muffs on, and open up that blast gate. See how they stick? It's a pain. All right, that one. We'll see how it goes. It's pretty highly figured there. All right, feed her in. Look at that. So nice. Look at the side. That's the, the price on it. That's the side that I bought. And then the side I've just done with that absolutely magnificent machine. Links in the description box down the bottom if you want one. Where are we? This way. I'll show you first before it goes in. This is the um, out of the bandsaw. I'll show you to you as it comes out. Beautiful. No snipe. Hey Steve, how are you? You ask Riley what he thinks of the machine, he's got one. Eight millimeters. I'm gonna raise it up. I'll raise it up a little to, uh, it was on nine. I'm gonna take it down to eight. What it says here is eight. And I'm gonna run the other side through, the rubbish side that came from the mill this way.
and we're going to give it a quick test in here to see how it's fitting. It's looking pretty good. Take it down to seven. Lock. Oh, getting close. I'll go 6.5. Unlock it. I'm going to spin this around. You can watch me feeding it in. There we go. So these are 6.5. I'm happy with that. I'm so happy. Ha! Turn this off. All right. Take that off. Whoa, sorry, Zoe. We had a collision. All right, now what I'm going to do, do you use an outfeed roller for longer pieces when using in the thickness of mode? Yeah, the outfit, <laughs> look at this thing. <laughs> the outfeed table is basically by hands because I normally feed in from one side until it's at the halfway point, then I come around to the other side and tail it out. If it's in outfeed mode as well, like if it's, if it's feeding through, what I normally do, if it's a long piece, I'll bring it back our, away so it doesn't run into the, to the table here. The, I've got a bench with it. Sink in it. I don't want it running into that. See, so sink. Drink some coffee. You want one of these really nice mugs? You know where to get them. Uh, links down the bottom. Now, what I said was I'm going to rip this. Running slow. 11:48. Indeed, it is. Maybe the batteries on that are just about stuffed as well. All right. So I'm going to rip this now. Down here and here on the bandsaw at that same setting. I think we're going to be good. Excellent. I won't be using the bow thing. I'm going to do this basically holding onto it like that. I'm pushing it through. This is where I want to lock these up. See that? You can lock them up out of the way so they can't drop down below this green sticky, sticky part. All right, making sure I've got that gate shut. Now this is why I want that other gate because I've just had to shut the gate that's going on to the thicknesser. And the other thing is bandsaws are renowned for not being able to uh, get rid of dust well. So ideally I'd like to have a port here at the back because that's where the dust seems to go all the time. It gets caught in the cut. I'll bring this closer again. Ugh. And then we're going to use the, the uh, belt sander. Where are those things? Put them on. This will turn on automatically. Straight away, that's open. Beautiful. Lovely. Going to use hands. Come around this side. One. These are dressed both sides. <laughs> Pardon me. I can dress this up after as well now. Stuff it, I'm going to use this. It's just that bit safer. A whole lot safer.
two. And the last one. Whoa. So they're waiting for me. That's a good idea. All right, so they're just beautiful and they're going to go in there. I did say that I was going to show you, see the dust extractor closing behind me? Give it another 10 seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, well, it jumped in before I started the count. Um, is that a carbide blade on the sword? No, it's just a standard cheapy. I think it was around 30 or $40. I should get a really nice one. Anyway, so you wanted to hear about the snake. Here we go. <laughs> this was scary. All right, you ready? Here we go. I've just found a, what I think is a tiger snake. Down here a little bit nervous. I was having a look. I thought it was this hose to start. Let's see if we can have a better look at him. As I come in, no, no, see, get down. They do look like tiger snake stripes. Where's his head? There he is. No. So you reckon he's an eastern brown deer, Stephen? That's what the guy thought as well. I saw those marks. He looked like a tiger to me. They're very faint, but every inch and a half along, like he's, he was around, because uh, I was up on the second story looking down from the office, but his diameter was around 35 to 40 millimeters thick. Um, now, to get an idea, because remember, I was two stories away when I started that zoom in. Those blocks that I built the retaining wall out of, they are about that wide. Now, if you can get your head around that, if you want to rewind and have a look, he was about possibly one fifth of the, thick, of the width of those. He was, well, he was about two meters long. He wasn't young. He was big. So what it was, that concrete path, he, well, I, got, I rang a reptile guy up to come and take him, catch him and let him off in the bush, you know, somewhere else. So he didn't come back here. Anyway, he came down with his stick and all that, you know, his hooked stick. Um, and, but he went to catch him by hand, you know, just straight hands. I thought, you've got to be kidding me. And he, the snake was so quick, he shot, shot straight back underneath the concrete path. See, over time, the ground underneath the path wasn't really compacted a lot and it just settled a bit near the edge because I'll go into it another day, but that's how it was. There was a space underneath there and he shot straight in underneath. He was hooking in, trying to get the thing out. Uh, not as big, uh, three to four feet as big as they get. Okay, well, he's an Eastern Brown. Yeah, definitely. So that kind of took my day away from me a bit yesterday and I had Nessie as well running around the garden. So I had to lock her inside all the time and up in the house. Anyway, not to worry. We're going to do this part next. This, this, this is beautiful. All right. I'm going to cut them with a mitre to start, and then I'm going to trim the mitre in. That's nice. 
maybe a little too snug, but you know, it's pretty good. So I'm going to use my uh, clutch pencil. When we're getting down to finer work like this, I need a mitre here and a mitre here. Let's see how we go with that. Give me a second. Forty-five degrees, and there. Caught it, a rotten thing. That's all right. And the other one. Now, that noise you heard was because it didn't have much of a backing board on it. So this one is going to be, this one I'll end up using as a short one. That's why it's always good to do the long lengths first, children. <laughs> okay, and there's a lot of grain there. Let me do that again so we're not right on it. Do you have many Eastern Browns at your place, Stephen? Give me a sec. You heard it. Yeah, just caught. Ah, oh, well, that's the way it goes. I'm going to do another one further away. Like that. And then that one. And then this one. It won't be long. Let's see how we go. So I've got a couple of little mitres there, either end. And we're going to tune those in. I need to come back a bit further on that one. Oh, that one's nice. Um, like so. Like so, give me a sec. Yes, all natives. That's right, you can't kill them. There and there, just a touch. Use a Japanese saw to cut them in. Well, unfortunately, my capex was made in Germany. <laughs> give me a sec, I'll just give this a little bit. Well, I'm going to do it over here on this machine, on the sander. If I set that up there, you might be able to see it. Until it locks in position, that's good. And I'll disconnect this. I'm going to go over a little bit, guys. Sorry about that. But I thought you might want to see a couple of pieces in, and I'll finish it off in the Patreon uh, session. So those guys can watch it finish off. Now, ordinarily, a lot of people use a disc to do this part. I'm going to use the belt sander on this, and I'll be using this. And I've also got to show you the, uh, the fence. Look, I'll do the fence first, because people want to hang around and see that. <sighs> All right, this is my fence that I use on the router table. I'll move this out of the way. All right, it's very, very basic. This is the old style Craig fence. In other words, it was one square or rectangular section of steel, oh sorry, of aluminium, aluminum. Use a chisel, okay. Now underneath, that's all it is. I've made a saddle, pocket hole together, and I'm holding on to the Craig router fence using T-bolts into the slot, the T-slots that are on the back of the fence. Just T-bolts and locked it on. It's so easy. Then here we have this channel that goes over my rip fence and a couple of rare earth magnets or mag switches that I turn 
My fence has a steel channel down the center. Okay, so that's it. There's nothing really to it. It's very, very easy. How to do it with the new one, with the new ones. Might be a bit more mucking around. Um, how will the vent open when using the disc sander? All right, good question. See this power lead here? This guy? Whatever, whatever I plug into the power lead that is on my hose, the dust extraction hose, will activate. That machine will turn, open that blast gate. That's all there is to it. So I'll come around here and plug this in. Okay. So that lead is hooked on, uh, is, is goes straight up to the controller that's up there beside the blast gate. There's just a power point uh, and it runs all the way back on the wall, sorry. And then there's a lead from there that goes down to my dust extractor and that linear um, actuator it pushes up, hits a switch, opens it up, sends the current down to there, says turn on. There's a special box down there that does everything. It works beautifully. So this is a MITRE V27 INCRA MITRE gauge that I use. <clears throat> I have a T-track, just this bit of blue T-track screwed to the back of a piece of Merbo. And so this is my sacrificial piece of timber. There's two piece, two uh, clamps here for the T-bolts. So I can undo those and slide this anywhere along depending on where I'm using. So I can use this on the table saw, I can use it here, I can use it on the bandsaw, wherever I want. I've set it up to 45 degrees. I've got a 240 grit belt on there at the moment. So let's see how we go at fitting this. Make sure that I've got that one to there. Yes, I'm working to the inside. That's not the right one, of course. It's this one over here. That would have been scary. That other one was the short one that I, <laughs> that I made. Uh, unintentionally, of course. We'll take a little bit off this. Listen. She's open. And that's running. Let's have a look. That's it. All right. <clears throat> now the short one will also do. Other end. There, pencil. A little bit longer than what I want. Give me a second. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> okay, so now I have a short piece and this one is going to go into there, but I've got to take a bit more off it and then I'll get some glue. Just a bit at a time. I'm not going to race this. I'm going to put a bit of glue in there and tap that first piece in.
just a little bit. I'm not going to go over the top. Yeah, look, snakes, when, you, when I first see a snake on the property, it's just, I go, <laughs> And then, then I say, yeah, well, he's got a right to live here too. I'm not going to put a heap of glue in here, just across the bottom. I'll show you why. That's all I'm putting in, just a bead across the bottom. I don't want to have squeeze out all over the place. It will squeeze out, but I don't want a heap of it. Put it in. Carefully. My mallet, just tap it in slowly. Tip that down so you can see it. That's my first bit of inlay in. Now we're going to do this. Um, so now that I have the inlay in that side, I can look at this side and go, right, well this, I can cut up to it properly now. This one can go in as well. Tiny bit of glue. So I haven't had any squeeze out out of the top. Rattlesnakes and scorpions. Well, we got scorpions too, and funnel webs. Look, you can have <laughs> have a competition. Who's got the most deadly animals? <laughs> and you know, I don't know who's going to win. Doesn't really matter. What does matter is I've got to get that in nice into that corner. This inlay might be just a little bit tight. That's cool. Just a little top. Here we go. Into the other corner. That corner's looking pretty cool. Yeah. Snakes are pretty amazing. They'll get anywhere they want to. All right. Okay, so you can see where I'm going to go with all of that. Um, the inlay, I'm going to keep doing the inlay over the, sh over the uh, Patreon show. Tip that back, so we're back to there. I'm going to read the list here. Make sure I've got everything happening. Ten past. <clears throat> I'll make sure I've got everything sorted. Uh, the in hue and pine into the cedar lid. Uh, the router table, saw fence, saddle. The Brisbane Timber Tools and Artisans show is not going to be happening this year, guys. Just to give you a heads up, I have to cancel all of my accommodation um, I probably won't get to see my grandchildren again either because I've got two kids up there. Um, caught up with the door, with uh, Ebony's family. Snake in the grass, you saw that. Viewers projects next week. Next week, um, I was going to try and show you how to do a melamine cutting on the table saw really, really nicely, but I'm not going to be able to get to it. Okay, there we go. Thanks again to my patrons. We will have the Patreon show um, or meet up. As soon as I've turned this off, I'll flip it on. And this is going to be so nice. Next week, we'll use the panel raising bit around the edges to give it a really nice shape like that so it can slide straight into that box. We'll cut the plywood base as well, and it's a similar color ply that I'm going to use. It's this one here. That's the ply base. That's quarter-inch ply, and it's got a nice look to it. Uh, I think it'll be fine. And I'll <laughs> try and set the rotten cameras up properly next week. Um, there we go. Slide down to uh, here. I'm having a quick look here. Before we go, I guess it won't be long before Baroness realises that chip rock does not taste any good. Yep. Don't eat chip rock, you silly dog. <laughs>
uh, having a quick look down through there, everything's good. Uh, cedar box lid, image, um, uh, the cedar and the clamps as I was doing it uh, with some uh, baking paper over the top so it didn't get a mess. And then that was clamped up and then back up to here. And there we go. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other. And I shall see you all next week. Bye.